This is CBC Here and Now. Welcome to Here and Now, I'm Carolyn Stokes. The public is being urged not to venture onto ice covered bodies of water without proper safety checks. This warning from safety officials comes after a snowmobiler's body was recovered from a pond near Grand Falls, Windsor over the weekend. The search for the 36 year old man began Saturday afternoon. He was traveling with another snowmobiler when the two became separated. Local residents helped rescue crews reach the area where the man was last seen and they found snowmobile tracks leading into a hole in the ice. The man's body was recovered yesterday. Now that is the second ice related death on the island in just one week. Funeral services were held today for a young boy who died in a tragic accident on Christmas Day. Joshua Wilcox was riding in a side by side with his dad when the machine broke through the ice on a small gully in Clarenville. After an hour under the ice, the 10 year old boy was rescued but later died in hospital. The Clarenville Minor Hockey Association is raising money for the Wilcox family and across the province, people have been placing hockey sticks outside their doors to honor him. Joshua Wilcox is being remembered as a kind boy who loved hockey. Rover's search and rescue says it hasn't heard of any safe ice anywhere in Newfoundland and Labrador so far this season. The organization has been checking with other rescue responders across the province and none of them have seen thick enough samples. Here in now's Katie Breen took some samples of her own today and found the results can sometimes be misleading. Tempting. Pond skating and snowmobile rides are part of a postcard Christmas, but the ice has to be there and it's easy to think it's thicker than it really is. The first time we measured today looked like a good seven and a half inches, but that's nowhere close to what's actually there. This sample of the pond shows what's lurking below. There's that clear hard layer, the actual ice, and then the snow ice on top. The difference in snow ice is uh, it, it's built up from snow and slush that are built up on top of the ice, on top of the clear ice that's on the, uh, on the ponds and waterways and what happens is uh, it gets saturated with water and it freezes. So you can see the different strength in the snow ice. I mean, there's, there's really no strength to it. You can chop it away with the axe. This clear hard ice, you can hear it, just that thump, thump, thump. It's, it's uh, a lot harder than the snow ice. It's vital to scrape that top layer away. What he's doing with the axe here now is actually taking the snow ice surface that's on top of the clear ice off before he drills this hole. Snow ice is dangerous. It gives the wrong reading. If you measure both layers together, you'll think the surface is sturdier and safer than it actually is. The clear, hard ice needs to be four inches to walk or skate on, at least five, preferably more for a snowmobile. The first measurement said we'd be safe. It was thick enough. But this measurement, the actual measurement, without the snow ice, says otherwise. What can you do on two and a half inches of ice? Uh, look at it. There's not much we can do with it other than uh, dream about what we're going to have uh, later on this winter. There's no given ice making timeline. Some years, the ice freezes fully before others. Right now, French says, it could be February or March before ponds are ready. It all depends on the weather and the body of water. He wants people to beware of snow ice. Keep safety in mind. Have people with you when you go out to test the thickness and be prepared. Plan your trip, take the essentials, know how to escape. As we've already seen this season, ice is unforgiving. Katie Breen, CBC News, Paradise. That's definitely good advice and you know with all this winter weather it certainly is tempting to be out there but uh, definitely should take care uh, if you are venturing out. Weather over the next couple of days, finally going to see a break in some of that snow uh, for some of us through the island and even up through Labrador as well. Some lingering flurries was, is expected uh, to continue for the Avalon tomorrow, at least through the first half of the day. And then as we head into New Year's Day, it looks like the next weather maker is in store. We've got some snow on the way, some special uh, weather statements and a couple of wind warnings as well. I'll have all the details coming up. Are you ready for the ski and snowboard season? We'll have the latest on what's happening at Marble Mountain coming up.
An offshore worker is in stable condition after a workplace accident on the Terra Nova oil platform. It happened late yesterday afternoon. Suncor, the company that owns Terra Nova, says the worker fell off a ladder while testing for gas in a tank. The employee was treated for injuries and then transferred to shore by helicopter for further medical treatment. The company's release doesn't say what the injuries are or whether the employee has been hospitalized. The Terra Nova platform shut down on December 19th because one of its two water pumps wasn't working properly. Well, now to an unfortunate story about a Christmas crime. An international student is hoping police can find his new car after it was stolen from a holiday party over the weekend. The car was more than just a way to get around the city. It was also his ticket home. The CBC's Meg Roberts has more. That's Sashin Sorish handing out food at a Christmas event put on by a local association. The cheerful dinner was a harsh contrast to what the rest of Sorish's evening would look like. When he went to get his coat from the entrance of St. David's Church at the end of the evening, he noticed it was missing, which meant so were the keys to his new car. At, at first I thought someone might have borrowed the jacket for a quick smoke or something. So I waited for two minutes over there and my friend uh, friend came from inside and he found his jacket was also missing. So then I got suspicious and I came outside and uh, the car was missing. I couldn't see the car. He had bought the black 2010 Hyundai Elantra only a month earlier. The car wasn't insured until December 26, so he had only driven it for two days. He can't replace the car through insurance because his plan does not include coverage for stolen vehicles. I spent all my savings on the car and and it's only a month old so I was like so shocked and disappointed and I almost felt like crying I don't know what to say. Sarish who will now use the bus to get around says transportation wasn't the sole purpose for buying the vehicle. Uh, I thought I can do some mm, delivery jobs or anything so can I can earn some extra money to do my uh, pay my tuition fees and uh, flight back to my home so that was my plan and was ended up like this. Newfoundland Constabulary says it's investigating, but as of now, the car has not been found. Meg Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. A funeral service was held on Friday for an Upper Gullies couple found dead just before Christmas. Police have released little information about what happened, but there are signs suggesting the longtime partners had a strained relationship. Patsy Scott and John Murphy had been together for more than 30 years, but CBC has learned the two were buried in different locations with Patsy Scott's family insisting on it. And neither partner was mentioned in their respective online obituaries. A member of the Scott family tells CBC News that Patsy Scott had talked about ending the relationship. Now, police have not said whether this was a murder-suicide, but have called the incident isolated and said there's no threat to public safety. An RNC spokesperson said today the force is still awaiting information from the medical examiner's office. The two were found dead on December 21st on their property in Upper Gullies. A Christmas Day fire at a hotel in Mount Pearl is now considered suspicious. Police have yet to determine the cause of the fire, but will be investigating further. Hotel Mount Pearl burned to the ground three days after the Christmas fire. Police haven't said whether or not they consider the second fire suspicious. It took firefighters the better part of the day on Saturday to knock down the flames of the fire, which destroyed the building. Thick black smoke could be seen and smelled across much of Mount Pearl and St. John's. The hotel had been a fixture on Park Avenue for more than 20 years. And on the West Coast, Marble Mountain is busy prepping for another ski season, but it won't be able to open for at least another week. Here now's Troy Turner has this report. Ski Patrol is ensuring safety equipment is secured. Maintenance staff are tuning the machinery and making sure it's greased and ready to go. And the lodge is ready for visitors. The only thing Marble needs now? More snow. Although it looks like there's a healthy layer uh, uh, behind us, unfortunately there's a lot of sticks and stumps and rocks uh, slightly underneath. Uh, so we're not making our tentative opening of January 2nd because for safety concerns, uh, we just don't have the snow that we were hoping to get. Equipment has produced some mounds of snow in areas of the hill, but it's not enough. Cold temperatures or uh, a good old-fashioned Newfoundland snowstorm. Uh, 
certainly uh, we have the potential of both here in Newfoundland, but uh, you know we're hoping for uh, for uh, one or two feet of snow uh, to come uh, overnight, and uh, we're ready to go. Businesses operating at the base of the mountain are also affected by the delayed opening. We've, we've kept our office closed and uh, call forwarding on. Uh, but no doubt if the hill had been open, we'd had two people in there working today. Nearly two years ago, the province put out a call for privatization of some hill operations. Flynn says he has not submitted a proposal, but privatization will help doing business at the hill. I certainly look forward to, you know, that rolling out whenever that might be. Uh, because it gives you some stability and uh, you can actually plan uh, what you're going to do here in the future. While preparation continues here at Marvel Mountain for the opening of the season, it's going to be at least another week or so before that happens. On the flip side of that, the season will be extended this year for another week to close in mid-April around the Easter break. Troy Turner, CBC News, Marvel Mountain. We were uh, avid home brewers and we decided to uh, share and go pro. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard a lot about the many microbreweries opening up in eastern Newfoundland, but tonight we have the story of some people who are making a go of the drinking business from the other side of the province. Um, personally, I feel a warm meal is being able to um, stay together with family and share a very delicious meal on a Christmas day. Yeah. 
the food bank does a really important job, especially in the holidays, to have people, have everybody enjoy that Christmas spirit. A warm meal means comfort. Uh, a warm meal means a full belly. Yeah, a warm meal for me sounds like family and sounds like uh, good times. <laughs> uh, to me, it means community. A warm meal means a kitchen stocked with ingredients to make it. It means that a lot to me that I have the uh, capacity to have a nice warm meal. A warm meal can warm more than one pot. One warm meal won't solve food insecurity on the East Coast. But at least it's a start. Welcome back, everyone. Well, lots of snow on the weekend, but it certainly made for some pretty uh, vistas. <laughs> nice hiking in the woods. It's beautiful out it there. It is. It's gorgeous. Uh, checked into some of those numbers, nearing 55 centimeters for Ooh. St. John's and Gander uh, nearing 40 centimeters wow. since Christmas Eve. Okay. And I know you're probably wondering what other areas saw, but those are the, you know, a lot of them have some missing numbers. So I don't uh. know exactly uh, how much snow has fallen everywhere else. But yeah, lots of snow. Mm -hmm. Normally uh, in St. John's, a normal December is about 63 centimeters of snow. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're, you know, yeah. we're on par there for sure. Okay. Uh, but temperatures have been lovely mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's take a look at where we sat for most of the day today. Zero degrees was the afternoon high in St. John's and really uh, pretty similar temperatures across the board. The coolest air uh, is up through Lab City sitting at minus 17 uh, this afternoon, Nain at minus 10 and then down through Cartwright you're sitting in the minus single digit. So what's going on right now is we have a ridge of high pressure that's going to start to move in. That's going to keep things quiet uh, for the next 24 hours. However, uh, that low offshore is bringing that cloud cover for most of the island and some onshore flurries, even some freezing drizzle uh, for parts of the Avalon. If we zoom out, our next weather maker is currently over Ontario. It's bringing a mess of weather through the Maritimes as we head through the day tomorrow. And that's going to be our weather maker as we head into New Year's Day. So uh, for the next or at least 12 hours, we're still looking at that onshore activity for essentially from Bonavista North through to uh, the Avalon Peninsula. And then um, so not a whole lot as far as accumulation go, but the next accumulation, like I said, will be for New Year's Day. So we do have a special weather statement in effect right now. Showing about 10 to maybe 15 centimeters of snow. There could be areas that see more than that. Still a few days away, so we have a couple of days to iron that out. Uh, but a wreck house wind warning has been issued. This will be for tomorrow night through to Wednesday afternoon as that next low approaches. We're looking at about 110 kilometer per hour winds with that, and those winds will ramp up uh, as well across the province, at least through the island as we head into Wednesday. So uh, as far as tonight goes, pretty quiet, just uh, continuing to see that onshore uh, flurry and or freezing drizzle activities we head through the overnight. Otherwise, that high pressure will start to dominate and clear things out across the island, certainly by morning for the majority of the island, but those temperatures are gonna have a chance to dip uh, quite low, minus 27 for Lab City overnight tonight, minus 24 in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Uh, minus nine will be the story for Corner Brook. Those winds will finally ease, but they're gonna stay strong along the northeast coast. So still looking at northwesterlies, uh, 40 to 60 kilometers per hour. Then as that ridge of high pressure grasps uh, a little bit further uh, east, those winds will finally die down through the day. But we will start to see some cloud cover move in thanks to that next approaching system uh, for Lab City. Some snow will move in through the overnight as well. But overall, it's going to be a pretty quiet day. Just some flurries to get through for the first half of the day. Again, an onshore flow for the Avalon and uh, parts of the northeast coast. Bonavista hovering around the zero degree mark. Uh, those north northwesterly staying strong through the first half of the day and then finally uh, going to see some relief in the, that front uh, heading towards central. Some sunshine will peak out for Grand Falls, Windsor, minus three, minus two for Harbor Breton as you head towards the coast. Certainly uh, best chance of seeing some sunshine. These flurries down here that I have will be overnight. And again, that's that next system moving in uh, generally light winds. Uh, so overnight for if you're going to see those fireworks, does look like it'll be uh, some pretty nice conditions for that. Uh, minus four for St. Anthony, minus eight for Cartwright. And then as you head towards Lab West, again, those chillier temperatures in the minus teens, but those winds will be generally light, so it won't feel so bad. So that's a look at uh, your New Year's Eve forecast. We'll look ahead to New Year's Day and how much snow is on the way coming up.
Thanks, Ashley. Well, three friends have joined forces to make sure there are fresh ales at the end of the world. Ragnarok Northern Brewing Company has set up shop in St. Anthony. Here now's Megan McCabe got a sneak peek just before it opened last month. Right across the street from the hospital here in St. Anthony, there's an old building that's getting a whole new life. And it's a labor of love for one local couple. We were uh, avid home brewers and we decided to uh, share and go pro. <laughs> <laughs> We're a uh, new brewery starting on the uh, Northern Peninsula. We're a five barrel brew house. Currently we're running about five beers on tap with plans to have a few more in the future. Well, the building was built back in the uh, 1930s and it was a, uh, a co-op. So there was a co-op store here where people could come and get groceries and so on. The reason we uh, wanted this business here was for our uh, community. So, um, you know, why not? trial it on our, on our community first. I think that it's a challenging market to get into, but I, I still think there's room for growth, and it gives people a chance to um, tour the island, because there seems like a lot of people, we've had interests from all over the world, um, people who probably wouldn't have even known Snathney existed without the help of having, following the brew, craft brew scenes. Our tables were uh, reclaimed wood from the uh, Harry Kerr's Collegiate that was recently uh, tore down and moved to a new uh, school. So we went into the gymnasium and uh, we cleaned, reclaimed a lot of the floor. And we also used a lot of the boards that came from the classroom walls to uh, redo our bar and everything as well. I grew up here in Snathney, so I, we went to that school. It was sad to see it go. So it was a hub of the community for many, many years that was here. So it was really nice to keep a piece of the history and keep it alive. I joked because I said, I, I think I threw up on this table doing laps in school, so now I can sit to it and enjoy beer and think about all those laps that I ran as a kid. <laughs> Ragnarok, it's a little play on the uh, Viking word for the end of the world. Um, so our business partner came here, and she stood up on the end of the town looking across the ocean, and it felt like she was at the end of the world. Yeah. She couldn't go any further. So we, uh, we took a play off the name Ragnarok, because we're on the rock, and changed it to Ragnarok. We're at the end of the Viking Trail, the end of the craft brew scene in Newfoundland, so it was kind of fitting for the whole thing. And Ragnarok is actually Ragnarok, uh, which is uh, Viking uh, for the apocalypse, the end of the world. And, uh, you know, the snake uh, surrounds the earth, uh, tail uh, meets the head, and when he eats his tail and uh, releases, uh, the oceans open up, the apocalypse begins. So it's uh... so come to Ragnarok and get a beer before the world ends. <laughs> <laughs>And I need some help with this. There's a skating party at Bannerman Park at six o'clock in Bannerman Park. I'll be shooting a countdown, which we're going to roll into the Newfoundland show and we're going to roll into the Atlantic Canada show. So I need kids and families. Live from St. John's, it's New Year's Eve. Rick Mercer will be hosting tomorrow's cross country special, but he needs your help. Details ahead.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, tomorrow night is the big night. It's New Year's Eve, and CBC is hosting a national broadcast right here in St. John's, live from Mallard Cottage. And the man who is going to be guiding us along the New Year's Eve special is the one and only Hello. Rick Mercer. Very Hi, happy Rick. Happy to be here. <laughs> So tell us about the show tomorrow night. I'm so excited to do this. I hosted New Year's Eve, uh, the big Canada 150 celebrations on Parliament Hill, which was a great big national party. Then I did it in Niagara Falls. When I hosted from Niagara Falls, that's where the big rock show is happening. But the Newfoundland segment was in Mallard Cottage. And I was, uh, as I was watching all the parties happen across the country, I was desperate to be in <laughs> Mallard Cottage. So when they asked me this year to host, I said yes, but I want to be in, Ni in Mallard Cottage. Mm -hmm. So the big rock show with Brian Adams is happening in Niagara Falls, and we will be going to that and celebrating all across the country. But the control room, the whole thing is coming out of Mallard. We got Alan Doyle, we got the Dardanelles. It's just going to be spectacular. The, the gut looks amazing. We've lit the whole thing. It's just spectacular. It's going to be a great show. The whole Kitty Vitty Village, we, the whole gut is lit up. You'll be able to see it from space. <laughs> it's, it looks stunning. That's if it, you know, doesn't fog over. But right, right now, fingers crossed, <laughs> it looks like it's going to be great. Yeah. So tell us how the show is going to work. What sorts of things will people see when they tune in? Well, it's a big national show, but of course, uh, the heart and soul will be in Mallet Cottage. But like I say, we'll be going to Niagara Falls for Walk Off the Earth. We'll be going to the Yukon. We'll be going to Montreal. We'll be going all over the country. It's a big national celebration. We'll be uh, popping in on first responders all across the country. I sh shot a little bit uh, here at Central Fire Department with our firefighters, men and women, and uh, and we'll be hats off to those folks as we roll across the country. Uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of things planned. So One of the things that is happening in St. John's early on New Year's Eve, and I need some help with this, there's a skating party at Bannerman Park, and it's before the fireworks, which are family fireworks, which happen at Kitty Vitty Lake at 8 o'clock. But a skating party goes up until 7.30. At 6 o'clock in Bannerman Park, I'll be shooting a countdown, which we're going to roll into the Newfoundland show, and we're going to roll into the Atlantic Canada show. So I need kids and families to gather with me and count down 10 to 1. I think we can handle it. And that will be the countdown that people in Nova Scotia, people in Atlantic Canada, uh, and people in Newfoundland will see. Yeah, and there is that controversy this year of the fireworks being at 8 o'clock instead of midnight. How will that factor into the show? It won't. We will shoot the fireworks, and we will show the fireworks to the province, obviously, into Atlantic Canada. But uh, that controversy, I know, that tied up a lot of, lot of talk. <laughs> My guess is there will be 10 times as many people mm -hmm. at the lake for the fireworks. Uh, I know in Torbay they moved it to 8 o'clock years ago and now way more people go. So uh, I think once, you know, once the fun police put the uh, fence up at the harbor and said no fireworks at the harbor because <laughs> that was just too bloody spectacular, I think the whole thing went downhill and right. I think this is probably a, a step towards bringing it back and, and you know, fireworks are for kids. Kids like fireworks. Midnight, that's late. Yeah, And you still be able to see it on TV. Absolutely. That's where people should watch it. Mm -hmm. Really, it's a television event, let's face it. <laughs> so, of course, Newfoundland is the first place in North America to ring mm -hmm. in the new year. Is that why the show is being hosted from it here this year? Or? No, I'm pretty sure it's just because we said that's where we wanted to do it. Okay. I think so sometimes like people like things like this happening in the middle, <laughs> <laughs> in Winnipeg or Ottawa or Niagara Falls, but... Uh, uh, it's just it's just too special to not share with the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, you know, even though, uh, you know, uh, Alan Doyle and the Dardanelles, they're one of the acts of many around the country, but every time we go to any time zone, we will always come back to Mallard Cottage. Mm -hmm. So people across the country will be getting a feel for it. It's great. I've got a boat in the gut with people on it, <laughs> and I'm going to be on the boat. <laughs> I mean, this is... That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the music, it's just going to be kind of like... A jam session. Yeah. You know, the producers in Toronto at one point said, you know, after Alan Doyle and Tom Power, they do uh, their three numbers. Do you think you could get them to do a fourth during your one of your intros? And I was like, they're going to do 27. <laughs> they're not going to stop at four. Like, they're not, they're, there's no off switch. Yeah. Once the on switch goes on, yeah, you know, the lights will be turned off. They'll still be playing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, it sounds like it's going to be an excellent, excellent show. Have fun with it tomorrow night. Well, I'm looking forward to and it. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>
So if you'd like to check out the big New Year's Eve show tomorrow night, it starts at 1150 p.m. That's 10 minutes right before midnight and runs until 1240 a.m. Newfoundland time. It will air on CBC television and the GEM app. And as you heard Rick say, if you want to be part of the countdown to midnight, then head to Bannerman Park for 6 p.m. Turning now to national news, a potential New Year's Eve strike is looming at Montreal's international airports. Workers who refueled planes at Trudeau and Mirabel airports have voted in favor of a strike. That's if a new deal can't be reached by noon tomorrow. Mediators have been called in to try to find a breakthrough. The main sticking points are salaries and work-life balance. Workers have been without a contract since August. Their employer, Swissport, says a strike will cause minimal disruption with planes expected to fly as scheduled. Well, there won't be fireworks at Kitty Vitty Lake tomorrow at the stroke of midnight. This year, St. John's is firing them off at 8 o'clock. The city says it's a more convenient time for families with young children. We dipped into the archives to bring you this story from 1996 on the fireworks and the construction of another kind of harbor fence. Here's the CBC's Carmel Smith. The last day of the year started early for many. Crews set up a stage in downtown St. John's for fireworks, a light show, and the Irish descendants. Well, this weather actually is pretty well the same as it was last New Year's. And people come down and they're pretty dressed for it and everybody expects it to be cold. And just to make sure no one makes a bigger splash than they intend, a fence. Oh, well, just putting this up now to protect the people from anybody gets staggery come out over the wharf there, that's all. Right? What makes you think anyone might stagger over the wharf? I thought it might be one of them. That's the only reason why I'm doing it. <laughs> if you prefer to sit under a canopy of balloons instead of under the stars, here's an option. So far, I've only been here about a half hour, and I got about 60 done so far. So it's not that hard, especially with the help of this machine. $280 a couple buys you all you can eat or drink at the city's two big galas. Uh, we're going to be starting off with a, uh, a fresh asparagus and artichoke bottom salad with a beautiful tomato vinaigrette. After that we will be serving uh, some lobster ravioli with a nice ginger coulis with that. Uh, with a nice champagne sorbet after that and then for our main course we'll be serving this beautiful fresh Alberta strip loin with a Newman's port sauce and a little bit of uh, Stilton cheese served with that. And over at the Delta. Okay, in the bowl and tonight is Devonshire pate with a Cumberly chutney. And that'll be followed by leek and potato soup flavored with beef eater jam. Okay, and that's followed by uh, salad with shrimps and scallops. And from there we get into the main course, which is caribou and beef tenderloin. The Delta's big draw is a replica of the Matthew in honor of John Cabot, complete with fog. On George Street, you can eat, drink, and party for $25 and up. Oh, we're, go we're going to get together with some friends of ours, and we're going to have a great dinner, and we're going to stay home with our children. Isn't that boring? Isn't that horrible? But that's what we're doing. Just get a cab right uh, from the friend's house to the bar, I'd say. That's it. And are you going to watch the fireworks? Probably not. Not if it's this cold. Uh, no, if it's this cold, probably not. It depends no. how many drinks we got in this. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone planning to go downtown and watch the fireworks tonight, the wind is expected to die down. But skies are also going to be clear, so if you want to stay home, you'll probably have a good view from your window. Carmel Smith, CBC News, St. John's. Putting on something fun and happy, um, that is really like the goal of, of our brand. What does the word happy mean to the St. John's fashion designer? That's coming up.
Welcome back to Here and Now. St. John's fashion designer Melanie Jacqueline wears happiness on her sleeve. Her brand is bright and fun. The word happy is even in her tagline, but what does that mean to her? She recently chatted with freelance video producer Leanne Morrison for the third and final piece in our series profiling local fashion designers. I feel like my business is m me. It is very personal, you know? Um, and I always strive to make sure that there's, the Melanie Jacqueline feels like me, um, which is colorful and uh, loud. <laughs> Sometimes obnoxious uh, and just fun, just to, to exude happiness and to have fun because, um, you know, life is not always happy. It's not always wonderful, don't get me wrong. Um, but if you can, change your mood and your mindset just by putting on something fun and happy. Um, that is really like the goal of, of our brand. I think for me it was the creative part. It was actually making something with your own hands, you know, from start to finish. Um, and also as a tall person, it's always hard to find things that fit properly, which was my mom actually sewed. I learned to sew with her and that was the reason she started to make her own clothes. We went to New York Fashion Week in 2017, uh, September 2017, and it was really cool because I opened this email and I was like, I started reading it and I got my whole, like every, my hair stood on it, and I, my, I had goosebumps and my eyes filled up and I read it out to my husband, uh, you know, we would like to formally invite you to showcase your collection at, at New York Fashion Week. <laughs> And he started to well up and we were just like, this is wild, this is crazy. And I was like, I, I mean, I can't do this. And then I thought, of course I can do this, I have to do this. To just get to go and bring your work, you know, you work so hard, you built this business and you created these pieces and to get to show them on an international stage is very cool. It's terrifying um, and really rewarding at the same time. Individuality, especially in my business and what I do, um, is so important. It is the driving force, you know, to just create things that stand out. It is what I want to do. I want you to go out and put on your dress and just walk into a room and people be like, wow, that is amazing. What is that? <laughs> it's funny because your own energy kind of attracts um, people with similar energy, you know? So, uh, and I think that what we strive to do in our shop um, is just to have fun. Um, and people who come in, a, a lot of the feedback we get is that it, the energy was really great and they had a lot of fun and people are laughing and we just want to make people feel good, you know, and for, to, for people to recognize how cool they are and how often they look in things and just to encourage people to have fun. Well, it's a source of never-ending debate. I'm talking about the Goulds name game. Is it Goulds or the Goulds? Well, you're about to find out the answer as well as what that G word means. Here's the next segment in a series we're calling Neighborhoods. I'm Philip Hiscock. Until a couple of years ago, I was a professor in the university, Memorial University of Newfoundland, teaching folklore. We're in the Goulds we should first deal with the question of uh, ghouls versus the ghouls. And uh, in all the official documents, even going back to even the 19th century, the official uh, pronunciation or, or a spelling of that name is without the word the. But in almost all informal uses, all the vernacular uses, uh, people say the ghouls. Uh, I see things like that, that the, as a key to its history. So any explanation of that name must include the word the. If, if you think about this area uh, where we are, it's a, uh, a fairly long flat valley. It's, uh, it's joined today to the city of St. John's most easily through the, uh, the roadway. 110 years ago, the railway came through over on that side of the valley, what's now the back line. The Petty Harbour people, this is really a suburb of Petty Harbour. If you go back long enough, this isn't part of St. John's, this is part of Petty Harbour. This was the country for the Petty Harbour people. And Petty Harbour is a, a little cove, rocky, not a whole lot of soil. And the people who moved in there, originally the English, by 1620 there were English families living in Petty Harbour. They would have been coming up to the country, into this area, for wood and uh, for animals, for trout, for uh, 
uh, you know, any number of things, grazing animals up here. And they would have found a series of meandering rivers. So what I'm saying is that from the 1600s on, this area was probably being used by Petty Harbor people. In the West Country, there's a word, uh, an, an old rural word for exactly that kind of land that uh, has a bunch of different pronunciations. It refers to rivers that meander, the flatlands that are produced during flood, the, uh, the, the slightly slide, uh, dry but uh, slightly marshy grasslands that grow. Perfect description of this. The word is most usually ghoul. And in, when you talk about these in the plural, it's ghouls. These are flat estuaries where rivers come out and form similar land to this, good farmland that became good farmland early on. I think that this place got its name very early from the Petty Harbor people who were West Country people. They were calling it up, up to the ghouls. They were going up the, the, uh, the series of ponds over there, first pond, second pond, and up into this big flatland that was so deliciously soiled. <laughs> I mean, it had lots of soil for, for making gardens and so on. Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, decades ago, a traffic cop was permanently posted at the intersection of Prescott and Duckworth Street in downtown St. John's. His name was Frank Miller. And when it came to directing traffic, he had some fancy moves. Well, in 1988, students at a nearby business school had a holiday surprise for him. The CBC's April Stevens tagged along. Frank Miller is a familiar figure at the corner of Prescott and Duckworth Streets in St. John's. His quick hand movements keep car and pedestrian traffic flowing smoothly. These students see Miller every day. They attend a business college just down the street. This afternoon, they had a surprise for Miller. <laughs> If I knew that, I would have let you go yesterday. <laughs> it 
ever been dressed up as a Christmas tree before, Frank? <laughs> no, not really. Especially not in the middle of the street in full uniform. <laughs> I guess it makes it kind of hard to direct the traffic. Oh, it makes it a bit difficult, yes. And what did the students give Miller? Long johns and um, socks and a ski mask, I think, which he'll need. <laughs> Standing out there in the cold. Fear he's going to need this. Yeah, chocolates. What are the chocolates for? That's uh, put fat on so keep out, insulate. <laughs> but before Miller could open his gifts, he had to break up the traffic jam. It's back to work on his chilly corner. April Stevens, CBC News, St. John's. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. We kind of miss that, right? The yeah. street lights there now, but yeah. uh, that human touch was so nice. Yeah, well, lights are directing traffic instead mm -hmm. of the, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow is the big night. Yep. A lot of people wondering uh, what it's going to look like when uh, we head out for New Year's Eve. Yeah, it's actually looking pretty quiet mm -hmm. for Good. the majority of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, once we hit midnight, we'll take a look at uh, what the future tracker is showing. So this is midnight, uh, New Year's Eve, potentially going to see some snow starting in the southwest portion of the island. Overall, it should be uh, partly to mostly cloudy temperatures in the uh, minus single digits, mid minus single digits, and then those winds are going to start to ramp up. So a little bit of a wind chill, uh, especially for the west coast and then down for uh, the southwestern portion of the island as well. Up through Labrador, you're going to start to see that snow. Now, that system is going to move in. It's going to bring some snow heavy at times for uh, most of the island. But we should see a transition to rain uh, along the south coast, maybe some uh, through ice pellets potentially uh, for parts of the south coast as well as the Avalon by mid-afternoon. That should change over to rain and then clearing uh, in behind that, or at least tapering off in behind that with uh, some snow continuing up through Labrador. And then again along the south coast as the next system moves in. So we do have a special weather statement in effect uh, as we speak. And then for the rec house area, again, those winds will ramp up about 110 kilometers per hour. Uh, we'll make sure I'll give you a little bit more detail on uh, just how much snow is expected, certainly uh, through tomorrow afternoon. So as far as temperatures go through the day, here's where we should be sitting for Wednesday. Those winds again will pick up generally uh, out of the south as you head a little bit further east. So two degrees. That's why we're going to see that change over to rain for the Avalon. Uh, same for Marystown and down through Port of Basque as well. Otherwise hovering around the zero degree mark. So that's where most of the accumulation should be uh, for central. And then Happy Valley Goose Bay minus 11 through the day on Wednesday and minus nine for Lab City. Now, looking ahead, once that system moves off, Thursday is actually going to be pretty quiet, but we do start to see that onshore flow again. So onshore flurries uh, and or squalls along the west coast potentially, and then going to continue to see those windy conditions up through Labrador, especially along the coast. So we could uh, see some accumulation as far as snow goes there because it's going to stick around right through Friday. It looks like otherwise quiet, but again, those onshore flurries expected for the West Coast. The next system will move in for Saturday. This one, the agreement not too uh, great, but we could see a push of warm air, which means things could change over to rain uh, into the afternoon on Sunday. So certainly so, uh, for the island anyway, something I'll keep an eye on over the next couple of days and then uh, that snow up through Labrador. So here's a look at your temperatures for St. John's and Eastern Newfoundland, not really moving much above zero for Wednesday and then hovering near or around there as we head into Saturday. Friday's looking uh, like the best day with some sunshine and uh, zero degrees for uh, central Newfoundland. Again, some flurries expected uh, by Friday, a little bit less cloud cover. And then uh, Saturday's where we're going to see a little bit of a mess, uh, minus one and then those temperatures will more than likely climb for Western Newfoundland. Essentially the same forecast sunshine tomorrow and then it gets gray uh, into the beginning of uh, next week. And then for Eastern Labrador, same thing. Temperatures though bumping up. Look at your minus single digits by the time Thursday and Friday rolls around and it looks like a similar uh, forecast for Western Labrador. But then by the time Friday rolls around back down into those double digits with snow returning for Saturday. So let's look at your uh, five day forecast. When I come back, I'll have your weather photo. Thanks, Ashley.
Well, a ride in a horse-drawn carriage in Montreal will soon truly be a thing of the past. City Council is banning the horse-drawn carriages starting on New Year's Day. For years, animal advocates insisted the horses have suffered for a tourist attraction. But as Allison Northcott reports, for others, it's a painful parting. It wasn't easy for Denis Murray to say goodbye to his horse, Cici. Cici. After 17 years working together in Old Montreal, Murray and his horse recently retired as the city imposes a new ban on horse-drawn carriages. We were connected, he says. She's like my baby. That's why it was such a hard decision for him to give her up for adoption. After years of debate around kaleshes, pressure from animal rights groups and videos of incidents like this where a kalesh collided with a car, the city is shutting the industry down. With heat waves in the summer, with climate change, with extreme colds in the winter, with construction on the roads, with the amount of vehicles that are on the road, uh, the animal safety is it, we, we have a serious question on the animal safety. Some say it will change the feel and the fabric of old Montreal. It's magical, it's romantic, there's music playing, it's cold out here, and it's a great way for somebody to possibly propose. But again, if the animal's healthy, I think they should be out and be free. As a tourist, is it something that you'll, you'll I miss? I don't usually or? partake in it, because I don't like that they, how they're using the horses for that. The city is offering Kalesh owners a thousand dollars compensation to give their horses up through organizations like the SPCA. But some say that won't make up for the loss of their livelihoods and are challenging the ban in court. Still, the SPCA hopes owners will take up the city's offer. We didn't want these horses to end up uh, at the slaughterhouse. Um, so we do hope that the horse owners will make the right decision for these horses and give them the retirement they deserve uh, rather than sell them off to someone else who will uh, use them in a similar type of environment. Murray says he's against the ban and insists the Montreal horses are treated well. As for Cece, he says with her new family in the country, she's getting the retirement he promised her. Alison Northcott, CBC News, Montreal. All this winter weather is perfect for sliding and enjoying the snow. I'll tell you where this is too when we come back.
Mr. Penn has a violent history and violent past. Oh, I'm yeah, well, am I going to be rolling on this? Yeah. All right. The local news, Philip Penn is back in custody. Okay, now yeah. hold on one second before we roll. More jail time for Philip Penn. The whole point of this, this, right? This will be a documentary, so this is about rehabilitation. Do you think he can turn his life around? I know he well, can. It's hard to rehabilitate people when they're around a bunch of criminals. <laughs> and second chances. And how do you pick yourself up and move forward? All these people that judge my kid, they're all full of shit. It was my fault, like it was not me. Philip is not a monster. I don't look down and I don't judge people for their mistakes and stuff, and I expect the same. That looks very intense. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that one in January for sure. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at this wonderful, fun-filled viewer photo of the day. Yes, look at that. I'm sure lots of people have been doing this over the Christmas break. Yeah. Lots of snow. Any idea where that is? Nope. <laughs> it's got to be where there's lots of snow. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty much everywhere right now, right? Well, along the northeast, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was actually taken in Winterton. Uh, fitting name. I'd say, yeah. yes. They, uh, lovely weather. I'm, I'm very much enjoying this. Aren't you enjoying this? I am. <laughs> I was out for a hike in the woods the other day and it was uh, just stunning. Mm -hmm. It was like a Christmas card everywhere you looked. It's the perfect time to get out and do some snowshoeing, mm -hmm. enjoy some sliding, all of that stuff. So, yeah. and if you are doing that and you want to send us a photo, send it to uh, nlphotos at cbc.ca. Yeah. Great. Well, <laughs> that's it for us tonight. Katie Breen will be here uh, tomorrow night hosting the show and uh, tomorrow night is New Year's Eve. It is. So everyone have a great New Year's Eve and a safe and fun uh, New Year's Eve and we'll see you in the new year. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night.